inviting a friend to supper. Tonight, grave sir, both my poor house and I do equally desire your company. Not that we think us worthy such a guest, but that your worth will dignify our feast. With those that come, whose grace may make that seem something which else could hope for no esteem. It is the fair acceptance, sir, creates the entertainment perfect, not the cates. Yet shall you have, to rectify your palate, an olive, capers, or some better salad, ushering the mutton with a short-legged hen if we can get her full of eggs, and then lemons and wine for sauce. To these a cunny is not to be despaired of for our money. And though fowl now be scarce, yet there are clerks, the sky not falling, think we may have larks. I'll tell you of more and lie, so you will come, of partridge, pheasant, woodcock, of which some may yet be there, and godwit, if we can, gnat, rail, and rough too. Howsoe'er my man shall read a piece of Virgil, Tacitus, Livy, or of some better book to us, of which we'll speak our minds amidst our meat, and I'll profess no verses to repeat. To this, if aught appear which I know not of, that will the pastry, not my paper, show of. Digestive cheese and fruit there sure will be, but that which most doth take my muse and me is a pure cup of rich canary wine, which is the mermaid's now, but shall be mine. Of which had Horace or Anacreon tasted, their lives as do their lines till now had lasted. Tobacco, nectar, or the thespian spring are all but Luther's beer, to this I sing. Of this we shall sup free, but moderately, and we will have no poli or parrot by, nor shall our cups make any guilty men, but at our parting we shall be as when we innocently met. No simple word that shall be uttered at our mirthful board shall make us sad next morning, or affright the liberty that we'll enjoy tonight.